Hi, and welcome back to the first spreadsheet tutorial from the City of Glasgow College Essential Skills team. Today I'm going to be introducing you to the layout of the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet package, or the front end, the screen that you're presented with when you start the application. This piece of software is much the same as the other Microsoft Office packages in its layout, as in we've got tabs across the top, your home, insert for putting things into your spreadsheet, laying out the page, creating formulas, data, review, view, Acrobat, don't know what that one's for, creating PDFs I reckon. Anyway, to show you round about the screen, the formula bar is where you can type in formulas or you can type them directly into the cells. The cells are these little squares, boxes that you see on the screen, each one having a, a reference number used with these column headers here which are your letters and your row headings which are numbers. So if we click in this cell, it's cell I12, like playing battleships, D13. Also if you click in the cell and you look up in the top left, it tells you what the name of that cell is. Also when using Excel you have a, a few different cursors that can be give you a few pitfalls, but they're also useful. If you look at the screen at the minute I have this thick cross, and that's for highlighting ranges. If you want to do more than one range, because if I select one and then try and select another, it cancels each other out. Although you can use the control key to select more than one range. Handy when creating charts. The columns at the top, you can widen these to suit the data that you want. Or you can double click and it will jump to the widest entry in that column. What you're looking at at the minute is called a worksheet. Now when you save a file in Excel, you're saving what's called a workbook. One workbook can contain many worksheets. If you see at the bottom here, I've got sheet 1, sheet 2 and sheet 3. Sheet 2 has got something on it, I'll come back to that in a little minute when showing you how to copy and paste formulas. These sheets can be named. You can name them anything you want. Oops. If you end up with a workbook, with a lot of sheets in it, it's a good idea to name them rather than leaving them at sheet 1, sheet 2, sheet 3. It makes navigating the workbook a lot more easier. Autofill is a thing that you'll use a lot in Excel for copying formulas, copying ranges of data, and it's also quite clever for doing things like this. If I put in the first day of the week and go to the bottom right hand corner, you see I get this thin cross. Now it's opposite from the big cross we had earlier for copying out ranges. Thin cross for autofill. If you go to the bottom right hand corner of a cell or a range of data, you'll see that there's a little square. When you move over that, you get a thin cross. I can drag out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You can also do this with the months. Same thing, autofill, small cross. And you can do the months. If you notice September here, it's not showing you the whole month name. That's because the column isn't wide enough. So if I grab here and move, you see the cursor changing again when I go between the column headings to two arrows pointing in opposite directions. If you click and hold, you can make this as wide or as narrow as you want. And like I said earlier, for November and December, if I double click in between the column headings, it jumps to the widest entry in that column. You don't have to put the days, um, the full day in. You can do the abbreviations the same as you can with the months. Oops, Jan. And autofill knows that you're doing that. You can also input series of numbers. If I put two in a cell and then four in here, highlight the first two numbers in series and then use autofill, it will continue on that range two, four, six, eight, twelve, uh, ten, twelve, sorry, three. And it will carry on that series of numbers as long as you highlight the first two in any series. If you make a mistake and you don't like what you have, you can just highlight all the data or any amount of data and press the delete key. Delete key says delete on it. A lot, a lot of people hit backspace when they think they're using delete. It's the delete key and you can take the data away. On sheet two, I have some data here. And I'm going to show you how to copy and create formulas and a simple formula tallying up and copying these formulas across and using the border tool. 
when I'm looking at this data, it just looks like a block of data. I like to see grid lines between. You can see the grid lines in Excel, they're very faint. These grid lines on the worksheets do not print. Only if you put the grids or borders in effect, it will then print. I'll show you. If I highlight this table here and go in here where it says font, borders, and I can choose all borders again for the total, all borders again, and widen that column a little bit. Grand total and stop. I'm sorry, and for total as well. Now, I also like to use a thick box border. This one, thick box, and I like to put it around each of the separate parts as well. I, f I could possibly, using the control key, like I showed earlier, highlight all of these at the same time and uh, put a thick box. And you'll see that each one of these has now got a dark outline around each section. This is a fruit market stock figures. I'm going to show you how to tally these up for each month and also for each piece of produce, each piece of fruit. The easiest way to tally up a row of data is use AutoSum. AutoSum icon you'll get up here when it says editing, the top right hand corner, AutoSum. Always start in the cell where you want the answer to appear, in this case, the total for January. Click AutoSum. AutoSum always has a guess. You'll see these little marching ants going round about the data that it thinks it's going to tally up. I have a blank cell in here. Now that could throw a chart out if I'm creating a chart from this data. So I'm going to highlight the data I want and only the data I want and then press return. I'll do that again and I'll show you a pitfall that a lot of people sometimes do. When highlighting data, when this is up, always make sure you're right in the middle of the first cell to select the range from. Like so. If you don't do that, what can happen is there's AutoSum having a guess at the two cells above. That's not what I want. Every time you click AutoSum, it will have a guess at what you want to tally up. If I go and try and click in the wrong place, it, will, it doesn't affect, or you'll highlight certain cells and it screws up the formula. What you want to do is make sure that you always select the data that you're looking for before you press return. Do not get into the habit of clicking auto sum and then pressing enter because it, 8 times out of 10 it makes a correct guess. But eventually it will make the wrong guess. And if you've got into the habit of just clicking auto sum and pressing enter, you'll end up with wrong calculations in your spreadsheet, formulas that are wrong. But you only have to do one. I'm going to be doing the same thing here and here and here and here. Each one of these cells I'm going to be highlighting for February, March, April, May for the totals. Once you've done the first one, you can go to the bottom right hand corner using autofill and you can drag down. It does them all for you. Same here. This time I want to tally up apples for the year. Start where I want the answer to come in. Auto sum. Tell it what I want to tally up. The data and only the data. Be precise when you're highlighting this. Always start off in the middle of the first cell and drag down and only highlight the data you want. Then press enter. And then I can go into this corner and I can drag this over and it will complete them all for me. What you're seeing here is hashtag signs. Now, this means that the columns are not wide enough to show the data, and it's just a matter of widening each of the columns to show the data. The column wasn't wide enough to show the figures, they were too large, and that's why you get hashtags. The last thing to do is I'm going to tally up a grand total of all stock. Now, I could tally up these or these, or the whole block of data. It's going to be the same answer. I'll do the whole block. Start off where I want the answer to come in. Click Auto Sum, and highlight all my data. Press return, 441,000. Now let's say I wanted to copy or move some data in this spreadsheet. Let's say for argument's sake I wanted to move my total, my grand total down a bit. If I highlight the data, and go to any edge, you'll see a different cursor. It changes to a crosshair looking down the sides of a gun. And I can move that anywhere. Now these are getting hashtags again because these columns aren't as wide as the ones that are widened over here. I could widen these again, but I'm just showing you how to move the data about. So <coughs> if you want to take a copy of something, let's say I wanted a copy of the headings. 
If I move over it, you get the crosshair as normal for moving, but if I hold down the control key, you'll see I get a little plus sign next to my cursor, and I can take a copy of something and move it. You see I've got the data here, and there's the original here. Again, if you're not happy with it, I can just highlight that data and press the delete key, but it leaves the borders. So you need to go back into borders and select no border to take that information away. I hope this has been an informative first tutorial on spreadsheets, and I will be back with another tutorial showing you how to create graphs and charts and spreadsheets. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.